Ms. Ocasio-Cortez, you're recognized for your five minutes. Well, I, I thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I, I thank you for convening a, a hearing on bipartisan consensus on cannabis reform. Check to see if there are pigs growing wings in this country, because I do believe that there actually may be some consensus here uh, on the uh, opposing sides of the aisle on this issue. Uh, but I do want to begin, actually, uh, with President Biden's order, uh, executive order from last month. On October 6th, President Biden announced that he would pardon uh, some, not all, simple mar federal marijuana possession convictions. and. While the spirit of this executive order should absolutely be applauded, uh, I do believe that issue experts have rightly pointed out that there is necessary action needed from Congress and state governments to actually fulfill the true impact uh, and live up to the spirit of that order. In fact, the White House itself and the U.S. Sentencing Committee reported that there are currently actually only zero people currently in federal custody for simple possession of marijuana. Now, Mayor Woodfin, an important distinction here is that President Biden issued pardons, not expungements, which is not necessarily within his purview. Uh, you, as uh, mayor of Birmingham, have also issued a, a large degree of pardons, and we thank you for that. But can you quickly explain the difference between a pardon and an expungement? Uh, Congresswoman O.C., uh, yes, yes ma'am, I can. And Mr. Chairman, um, just briefly before I answer the Congresswoman's question, um, words matter. And while I'm on record, I just would like to say to you directly and your committee members that um, putting uh, cannabis and slavery in the same category is patently offensive mm -hmm. and flagrant. Um, so I wanted to state that. But related to the Congresswoman's question, Pardons, as you know, are at the executive level, so president, governors, mayors. Um, and that allows us to uh, set aside penalties or if one's actually incarcerated at any level, um, city, county jail, state, or federal, that uh, they can immediately be uh, released. But the expungement is extremely important because that's more at the judicial level. Mm. And even if you pardon me, um, if I apply for a job, for instance, um, the record that I was, that this is, can still be on my record, but more importantly, the arrest. Mm -hmm. So the expungement through the judicial process allows a person's entire record to be concealed. That's not only the actual charge, but that it also includes the arrest. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for, for both those points, uh, Mayor Woodfin. And so for folks following at home, a pardon may reduce or decrease the penalty of a crime but an expungement is actually what wipes that slate clean, correct? That is correct. And if you have that criminal record without that expungement, it's harder to get a job, correct? Harder, is, yes. Uh, harder to qualify for affordable housing? Yes. Harder to access financial aid for education? Also correct. And so what you're saying, uh, Mayor Woodfin, is that a, a criminal record from marijuana use can still effectively bar you from participating in much of society without that expungement, correct? Unfortunately, yes. Uh, thank you. Now, last year, to uh, the chairman's point, I actually introduced a bipartisan bill uh, with Congressman Joyce of Ohio to help fix this issue for the federal government to actually begin creating grants to hand to states and local and local municipalities to actually fulfill and carry through that uh, process of expunging criminal records for the tens of millions of Americans who have been previously convicted of marijuana offenses. And I want to restate that number, tens of millions. That has impacts on our democracy, on our economy, on our state of housing, and our ability to participate in public institutions. Now, while President Biden's pardon is a step in the right direction, we have just heard, as we have heard from uh, Mayor Woodfin, it can't be where we stop. Past marijuana convictions must be expunged federally and locally. But also, I'd like to uh, finish off with um, Mr. Armentano. I also want to discuss who was left out of that order, which was undocumented people who were charged with simple possession of marijuana. Now, we know that while pardons may not have the full benefit of expungement. Uh, Mr. Armentano, what 
is the difference uh, to someone in an immigration proceeding and po who possibly may be deported um, in having that pardon versus not having that pardon? I'm not an expert on immigration policy, but certainly I'm well aware of expungements and their importance. I'm also aware of where this policy you're referring to comes from. It was a provision that was added in 1996 as part of sweeping anti-terrorism uh, legislation. Uh, this idea that we're somehow making America safer by giving the federal government the ability to deport people with green cards simply because they consumed cannabis, in some cases legally in their state, or because they're working in the state licensed cannabis industry, that was an absurd policy to pass then. I believe it's still an absurd policy to have in place now. And I'm glad to see uh, your leadership and efforts uh, Representative Mace's efforts to try to address this issue. I know there's provisions in the Moore Act that specifically speak to remedying this situation. Thank you very much. And I yield back to the chair. Thank you very much. Um, Ms. Ocasio-Cortez. And now, oh, and 